podcast today, I have with me uh, Graham, who is a yoga practitioner, um, at, uh, currently practicing with me in, in class, in studio, and he used to work in the medical field, and the th what we're going to be talking about loosely uh, in this conversation is really just that, a conversation around how does Graham's life play out how it used to be uh, in high pressure, right? It's high pressure environment, medical environment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a very different environment to the, uh, I would say, spiritual and uh, holistic um, environment of the yoga classroom or the yoga field or for that matter, meditation or for that matter, when one reads up about spirituality and yoga and so on. Um, so Graham, if you would like to just frame yourself in one or two sentences about what you used to do and for several years, you mentioned 35, 37 years of uh, professionally working in the medical industry and I like to call it industry sometimes. Uh, for sure. So just, yeah. If you want to That's... say a little bit, yeah, just a few short things. Yeah, so um, essentially I was fortunate enough to have trained in South Africa and then pretty much after um, my son was born, I left and went to live in, in the UK. And uh, um, so, I, so I effectively trained as a perfusionist, which is um, I'm responsible for the physiological um, uh, condition of a patient while on do having open heart surgery. So um, it's a, it's a very um, stress, stressful and also exacting science in the sense that uh, you are draining the blood out of the right side of the heart and then reinfusing it back into the systemic circulation. So removing CO2 and then introducing oxygen and all the other parameters around that. So the, the condition can change really quickly. And if you make a mistake, you probably have in the region of 15 seconds, and then you can effectively irreversibly damage somebody uh, neurologically. So, so that, that's a big part of, of what I have been lucky enough to do around the world. Um, and uh, it's given me opportunity, but it also has its uh, direct effect on your condition in terms of uh, the way you respond to things, the way you behave uh, in, a, in, a, in a social sense um, with your family and, and other people that you interface with. For example, I would often go into, often, loosely used term, go into a garage to, to have my car, petrol, um, you know, go have my car filled walk into the, to pay the, the, the person and they would say, how was your day? And, you know, this is, there's just such a disconnect because I couldn't really say to the person, you know, I've just been involved to cardiac surgery, et cetera, et cetera. So it was always, it's, and then effectively I'm very symmetrical. So I'd go home and my kids would be, you know, doing kid stuff and it'll be quite hard to integrate. And that was always a challenge for me. So I was very lucky to go to Bali when I turned 50 and, um, try to then examine or um, investigate the whole holistic approach to life, um, meditation, yoga, nutrition, and couldn't integrate. It was like, it was like such a shock for me. I, I'd spent my whole life trying to be at, at the age of 19, trying to meditate, but never really realizing it. And then effectively arriving in Bali and having this, mm -hmm. yeah, my, this, this experience. So yeah, that just, yeah, so, if, yeah, if I can just uh, interrupt you there. So, for me to, to, to frame all the stuff that you said now is, is, is just crazy already. Uh, so uh, so if, if I'm coming from a, a place of, of, of yoga, literally like on the mat, um, and um, being a yoga teacher, um, and one of the, the ideas, like, and now it just, <laughs> it, it, it does seem like an idea, uh, you know, as a as a therapist type of person, um, or a, a, a coach, or a, you know somebody that puts the person first, in other words, uh, or, or in principle puts the person first, we we would like to be able to um, think that we have an understanding of the other person, either on the mat or you know the other side of the engagement or whatever the case is. But what you also said is is so real in life in general um, that 
we very easily engage with people and saying, hey, how was your day? Um, having yeah. very little idea about what the person's actually been through that day. And it may have been kind of nothing, uneventful, or uh, perhaps just a trip to the mall and back for some people would be extremely challenging if they're, you know, having like epilepsy or something along the way, for instance. So of course. first of all, we don't really know what, a, <laughs> what kind of a day a person had. But secondly, if a person literally habitually by default has a high stress job such as a as a neurosurgeon or somebody working in that field or the type of thing that you describe uh, cardiac heart surgery then that is like positively insane compared to somebody that walked down to the beach and back yeah um, it's it's just incomparable so 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 kind of thinking of these two questions for you and and one is so you ha you were in that environment for over 30 years close to 40 years mm -hmm. and then you felt that you wanted to go to bali which is an idyllic island destination where you can just get away from all that stuff um so the the, the one question is isn't it simply a uh, a reaction wanting to get away from all of that and get something really opposite to balance and also then at the same time it is really a, a complete change of heart it's, it's a different it's really a different way of being and in um, in the yoga of this kind of seeking um, uh, meaning uh, the sense of searching for a different kind of a meaning or, or actually acknowledging a different kind of a meaning and then and then looking into that then that is something that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with where you come from or where one comes from but it's 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 a calling like he said you you were 19 and you and you were interested in meditation yeah and then after many years of doing this other ex literally another extreme you uh you you're back at where you wanted to 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 engage with when you were much younger yeah i, I think i think as you say the the, the problem the problem with the, i think with the industry as you describe that one involves oneself with often is that you and particularly in my own experience is that you leave a little bit of yourself behind every time and so the other thing as well is that you work with a team of people which uh, there's a lot of a lot of hostility, which is not always overt, but it's it's part of the process. And mm -hmm. what I find with 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 yoga, personally, is that it's very similar in a way. You turn up, you have to turn up. So there's a discipline involved in the process. Often you don't, not often, but sometimes you might not feel physically like you want to turn it turn on or switch connect, you know, tune in. But mm -hmm. but you but you arrive. And with, within moments, for me personally, particularly now with you, I have an incredible peacefulness that over, overcomes me. And I find that hugely um, rewarding and, and incredibly blissful. So, and, and, and I, think that's what, I think that's what we all as humans try to find or looking for. But it's a question of trying to find honesty with yourself often we, we we make all these excuses and it, once 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 you once you make that that commitment to yourself and and wanting to find yourself in the process then you then you kind of that's that's way that's where I, I i kind of frame it is that mm -hmm. um for me it i felt uh i felt um lost even though i spent so much time doing what i was doing mm -hmm. i found the environment incredibly combative and um uh, un, unsupportive, um, and yet, whereas yoga it gives you so much, it gives you so much. It, it, it is a lifestyle. It is a ph philosophy which is is achievable, and I just felt like I actually had to tune into it in a holistic way, as opposed to just. For some people, it might just be exercise, and that's 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 okay. But for me personally, I I like to try as best I can to have a have a meaning, have it create a meaning for me. And I'm just so blessed to have have met you, and and had the opportunity and uh, turning up and and doing it. And i every day I feel I feel better. Uh, I feel like sh things are shifting, and it's it's amazing. It's it, it mm -hmm. truly is it truly is quite remarkable. 
Yeah, there's a there's a uh, as someone who's 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 habitually looking for for a message or a or a or a reason or an understanding in that sense uh, or an insight. Uh, the first insight that 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 comes up for me and what we're talking about here is that. It's really, we can choose different rooms. We, you can be in a different island or in a different country or in a different place. And uh, when, I, when I think of the ordinary world, and I mean ordinary world, like what people generally do, uh, so much of it is dysfunctional uh, in the sense of it's kind of not very together, not very effective. And then much of it is also highly efficient. And uh, I was almost shocked when when you were describing the open heart <laughs> and i could yeah. you know i could I, I could so sense it and like I, I started to feel um nervous like as intense or stressed for 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 the sake of the person performing this highly um skilled and and um perhaps easy because you're used to it but nevertheless precise and life pending situation and um, you know it's like if you're a racing car driver or something it's you can watch it on TV and think like oh that's cool there goes a car around and around but you know it's like sitting behind the wheel at, at that speed it's just crazy and yeah uh, not only can I not see myself doing that or not uh, it's, I just don't see it is there's also there's just no ways I want to choose that so uh, like a, a, a um, what I'm trying to say there is, is um, it's it's literally a matter of what do we like um, and what do we choose to to do. And I choose I cho- deliberately chose to spend a lot of my time on um, on a yoga mat um, over the years. It must be many hours, and to develop this kind of of body or this kind of mindset where where I'm tuned into just this be and now stuff. Um, which is a different kind of a BNR than the racing driver that also has to do that. Otherwise, the guy will just drive into a pole or something. And it's like you have to really focus. Um, the wonderful thing about yoga is you can have your mind drift and you can, like, the worst thing that can happen is you can maybe fall asleep or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we can choose. We can choose if, if we want to be laid back or if we want to do something which is. Uh, highly um, stressful, basically. Yeah. So apart from you know, yeah. W- w- yeah. Apart from apart from 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 a yoga perspective, where I like to think of yoga as as having potential healing or uh, a, a health benefit, or it's like eating a healthy meal. It's nutritional versus something else that's perhaps more fun but more risky, and so. Um, yeah, so the, the connection for me into yoga is about actually avoiding surgery or uh, avoiding the hospital or uh, avoiding this extremely stressful uh, situation. Um, and uh, and it's a call into nature and natural healing, which is the other um, uh, topic, or perhaps it's the same topic that uh, I, th- I wanted to talk to you about in this podcast for that reason, because as I said in the beginning as well, it's often the yoga teacher or other yoga practitioners or yoga teachers or wannabe yogis. Um, we're not necessarily able to really tune in on where does the person in our classroom come from. So there's definitely that comment and, and um, conversation going on in, in my mind that um, I feel all yoga teachers and practitioners should actually explore more and also um, at the same time it's uh, so in other words the, the, the conversation doesn't go just one way what are you, who am I who are you but like also where do we meet um, and I, th- I think that would be a, a, um, a great um, contribution when we can have more of these kind of conversations where we're not only becoming aware of of the world not being black and white, but that there's actually a lot of um, intersection. It's like if you go into any public space, then people bring all their various aspects into that place. 
and yeah the yoga room is a specialized room or uh, the yoga studio or the yoga space but it doesn't mean that the rest even though we're in the yoga practicing yoga it doesn't mean that um, that uh, the reality stops existing so people actually go back to the realities and um, yeah more definitely from a from a, a teacher perspective it's uh, really useful for yoga teachers to know that people go back to their realities which may be vastly different from the yoga world yeah i, I, I absolutely agree with you i think um i think the beauty of the yoga space i.e studio is that it allows you to to dissolve from the process that you've been involved with prior to it and for as long as you can afterwards and and that's really what it's about it's about being able to when you're present on your mat and have the you know the, the fortunate situation of having a teacher like yourself who brings the the simple concept of breathing so really into our lives it makes us it makes you be makes you present it makes you realize the the physiology of of what it means to breathe as opposed to just autonomous, you know, autonomously breathing mm -hmm. without, the, without the idea of what it means, what it is. And so, yeah, it, 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 there's, there's so much to us that is still not understood. The fact that we have, you know, plasticity, we have a microbiome that has, has a lot to be answered for. And um, we have all these sci the science and it's quite interesting. The two different, effectively the two different fields, the, the, the spiritual side of things. And then this kind of science way that, has says if you don't have if it's not measurable then it's not then it's not real well actually mm -hmm. that is real mm -hmm. and for me that's mm -hmm. that's the real beauty of mm -hmm. of 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 spirituality and um particularly yoga yeah there's a, a, a part of the i almost want to say the the shocking horror of <laughs> of of picturing visualizing somebody in a in a in a theater uh, performing uh, medical duties um, of intense nature um, as an as an, as an opposite, opposite to being on the yoga mat or in a meditation room um, apart from the profound visual and physical differences and energetic changes differences uh, well first of all it, it actually apart from it looking different and feeling different uh, meaning energy it's so clear that uh, when you're in a serene place, either on Bali or on a yoga mat, wherever in the world, versus uh, being a racing driver or being stuck in in, 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 a, in a gridlock traffic or being in a theater, or for that matter, a, a place of like Wall Street. You know, I mean, I haven't actually been in Wall Street, but when you see it on the movies and everyone's just like waving, trying to get a deal or something. It's the energy, it's a different energy, it's a, it's a different vibe, it's, it's actually, as yoga says, it's a vibration, it's, everything is a vibration, and what vibration are we part of? And the interesting thing is that um, you were describing working physically with physiology, with, a, with anatomy, with the heart, like, in other words, like this mm. incredible medical science, and, and while you're doing that task, it's actually a task. It's it's not yeah. a it's a task. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a function. It's a hardwired yeah. functional task. N yeah. Not to say that that per se is dysfunctional, but from a body, mind, spirit perspective, it's like extremely dysfunctional. Actually, um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It, certainly, you just you do disconnect because, unfortunately, the, the the idea of the physiology of removing CO two and introducing oxygen into the cellular, you know matrix of the cell is is mm -hmm. like it, there's only one way of really doing it in terms of an artificial heart lung machine you know so um other than trying to breathe and and there's yeah it is it is very much um uh, a disconnect because you can't allow you can't allow the, the 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 patient to become the dominant sort of the you can't become too too much to have too much em empathy in the process otherwise you you become disconnected from the reality of trying to keep the mm -hmm. your eyes on the eyes on the road, so to speak, mm -hmm. and um, that's that's a problem. I think the other thing that's very very important from my perspective, spending so much time doing what I've done, is that re the realization that for the majority of people that have that have 
that I'm exposed to in terms of a patient perfusion experience, they've they've chosen a path and a choice which often has created chaos in their lives because they've required surgery, and 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 often what what somebody would say is um, the patients actually the actually the patients okay or very the patients well. Well, effectively, the patient's not well because they're having their chest ripped open to have a to have um, a serious repair on on their heart. So, I think we personally, it's like taking responsibility for who I am, how I turn up, and what I do mm. is very important to me. I can't I can't um, uh, judge the person that that or the people that I'm that I've had mm. the privilege or the the, the fortunate or uh, unfortunate to to have met, but. It certainly has a it has it has a, had had profound effect on me as a as a, mm. a simple person um, trying to find the way, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the that's that goes deep. Um, the, uh, one feedback for me that's that's an important one is that the that idea of of taking responsibility accepting responsibility for oneself uh, is absolutely paramount to to being a be, becoming a realized being in other words you in yoga uh, there's the concept of, of self-realization when when you or self realizes self which sounds just like gibberish um, to person uninitiated uh, in this um, direction of thinking, or that doesn't have that kind of philosophical interest. The reality of it is that if you simply think in terms of cause and effect, the, the, the sort of the classic example, and um, and importantly, not to to use it as an objective example and not as a as a judgmental comment, but if you think of somebody arguably eating too much unhealthy food for too long and the person then requires heart surgery, then I immediately want to uh, be um, in conflict about that because the person requires help but yet they've caused their own condition. And uh, my sort of grand and idyllic idea of the world is that I don't know what percentage, but like a huge amount, uh, more than 50, like three quarters percentage, I assume that the need for these surgeries or these kind of hectic medical interventions could be uh, uh, being prevented if people actually took responsibility in the first place for their own health. So in other words, we have this like, what you're describing stressful, or what I'm saying, horrible situation where people have to go through all the stuff with the medical trauma and it could all have been prevented yeah i think there's a definite disconnect i think the fact that yeah there's a there's a disconnect i think we we have a until we sort of move towards the light in terms of our own experience towards death it becomes it becomes an, an, a non-event, and and I think that's very real for a lot of people. You know, until they they they, they wheel down the corridor to go have had surgery, the fact that that our Western society, you know, is effectively eating too much food, there's too much food, and people are eating too much of it, uh, is, is 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 a is already a, a you know oxymoron. But but so, but by the by, I think that the fact that. Um, if we could only, if I, so my own personal thing is to be self-critical. You can only be self-critical. So my own thinking has to be has to be validated in as best I can. And then if it's not, if I don't, I often have to change that, and that's that's okay. I think that's mm-hmm. because there isn't really there is the way, but I don't know if it's always the right way. So that's my kind of, you know. Yeah. Well. Uh... Obviously, uh, this uh, for practical purposes, this conversation uh, we're trying to box into a sure, like some kind of a way, um, <laughs> some kind of a way, in some kind of a manner, in 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 something that describes our um, discomfort, my discomfort, your discomfort, and and I would assume. Uh, not being presumptuous, but this is what we're going through on the planet. Um, we're aware of of, of these extremes. Uh, we have it. We, we have a lot of knowledge, information, access to TV shows about um, doctors and 
uh, and there are documentaries coming out hard and fast about how this lifestyle is better and this lifestyle will make you sick and uh, and so on and so on and there's a lot of banter and opinion around diet um, now that's so huge about uh, anything from veganism to of course all the other variants uh, of people being um, ill affected by certain foodstuffs and so on so yeah the um, in, in our modern culture uh, and I mean ours uh, pe where, where people have the choice to decide what they want to eat um, and m as we know also the the bigger majority of people on the planet don't actually have these choices but in our informed and social media conscious um, planet um, people have become or we have become extremely obsessive about health well-being and and opinionated and so on and so on and so on and uh, it's a good thing uh, that that we have the information and that there, that there is debate and so on um, somewhere in all of that um, one to realize who we really are to realize oneself uh, one has to to seek some kind of a, a balance equilibrium and as you say it's only you that can do it with yourself um, we can look at the world, but ultimately we have to be self-critical. We have to have that self-critical thinking. And the important aspect around that is if it's not informed by, by, by a, a, a powerfully holistic model such as yoga, then controversially I would, I would or, or for me it's not controversial, someone else may find it controversial, I would say that it's absolutely vital that we're, we're informing our choices um, around something that's as holistic as yoga and, and nothing less. Um, yeah. And of course, and you refer to yoga as exercise. Yes, it's great exercise, but Pilates is also great exercise. The the difference with the yoga system is it says that the the grand goal or the the practical goal is to to find a way. In other words, you're not just exercising; you're actually finding a way. You're seeking a way. So in yoga, there's even the concept of the seeker. And what are you seeking? You're seeking the truth. But whose truth? What truth? And, you know, when we when we look at your biography, then, you know, like some guy may just go like, you know, this guy got stressed out, burnt out, dropped out, he wanted to go to Bali or something. Um, you can tell it to me in such a way that I'm saying, hey, this guy's a classic seeker, you know, so we can also interpret anything any which way we like. Uh, but the, the, but this concept of the way, which I said we're not going to talk about now, we're talking about it, <laughs> is, is, <laughs> is quite a vague concept, but yet it has this clear sense of, of holistic importance around it. Um, and yeah. that holistic <laughs> really means it must have the whole in it. If it doesn't, then it's simply not holistic. Yeah, I think for, for me, my own personal story is that now is to be flexible and, and yoga gives me that in mind, body and spirit. And that's really what I, I, I ultimately, uh, that's my mm -hmm. journey is to find, mm -hmm. find my flexibility that I can mm -hmm. not be judgmental, not do the things that create the chaos in our lives and disconnect us from the reality of Mm. who we are and the kind loving mm. you know real person in the in our real universe which is yeah. a blessing really absolutely and that um that non-judgmental aspect that you're talking about so importantly being us also not judging ourselves for where we come from or what we may be doing tomorrow that may turn out also to be a bit uncool um so it's it's starting with oneself and um, I know um, that in in previous private conversations we've several times talked about uh, coming to grips with that seeking the way of, of coming to an understanding with with this be the change um, uh, yeah is it, is it yeah. a you know, is, is, it, is it a defined uh, something? Who's the change? What's the change? What does change mean? 
um, and it's uh, it's something like being in the change. Um, uh, there's something forming. There's an evolution happening. That's one one definite way to look at it, and there's definitely the sense of of dynamically being the change. You are the change. Uh, so you are the person that's not judging yourself and then realizing, ah, maybe it'll be better if I don't judge them. It's less dysfunctional. Or hey, wait a minute. If I'm judging them, am I not actually judging myself? And it's really this kind of um, interaction <laughs> as well with the environment. And uh, yeah, if, um, I'd like to get a last uh, comment, uh, which would be a nice way to close the, the conversation here, is I often find that the, the time that, that we spend in a yoga practice, which is perhaps if we're fortunate uh, to choose to practice regularly, an hour here and an hour there. Um, in other words, we're not necessarily talking about extreme practices of, of hours and hours on end every day, non-stop. Um, however, those um, those hours when we pay attention um, in, in our yoga practice, we often experience and every yoga practitioner will will, uh, will say this, whether they're even a beginner or with more experience, that there are often these profound sensibilities that uh, literally just it arise, it just comes up, um, like what you describe as peace, where it just starts to become obvious where we can find health and peace and non-judgment and um, simply not deciding to be in a certain environment but taking responsibility for oneself in another environment and uh, at the same time um, you know when you step off the mat you step back into the normal world it's, it's like the one world isn't this it's more like we dissolve the conflict than that the other world goes away necessarily and and that's the yeah. way I, I think that's the way yeah. Uh, personally, you know, I think over time that I've been able, lucky enough to be able to practice yoga, I've always just, it's, you know, where, what I'm, where I'm at now in terms of my own personal experience is that the hour dissolves. I, I don't feel like there's an hour. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, it almost like it doesn't, it, I, I, I almost can't re remember the beginning, but I feel the end, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the, you know, the connection between you me and the universe and the energy in the room from the people around me uh yeah. is, is 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 this collective uh, consciousness which 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 makes us makes me feel like there is just the now yeah. just that moment just the time that isn't anything more than being there and that's the that's the beauty of yoga for me and 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 that's a that's a particularly beautiful thing um, and, and, and a word such as profound does actually capture that kind of um, aspect of, of, of being where time, space, it, it falls away. And uh, t just to perhaps justify, but in, in a sense also understand it, is that that's exactly the, the orientation for me as a, as a practitioner and, and wanting to to be able to share that um, sense um, or, or experience is ex the whole practice is actually motivated by by this way of being, and yeah. uh, and 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 it very beautifully uh, shows up for us in our own lives. And it gives other people their own mirrors and experiences where, where when with the practitioner, actually you have to experience the nothing short of bliss that moment or that time where, where, where life does seem perfect and timeless, and it, it, it gives us a reason to live that that is clearly the result of a, of a profoundly holistic practice so you yeah you can you can get that mindset from all kinds of other things like heroin or something for example or uh, by running fast or something you know like something that stimulates that sense of uh, um, 
of physical well-being. However, the yoga practitioner remarkably sits still at the end of a class or lies down still and there's actually nothing happening and there's uh, there's this massive health benefit but there was no eating healthy and there was no um, positive affirmation and there was no there was wasn't even an asana and perhaps even that's post pranayama as well it's actually just a something that's the result not of of all the the, the things that that the world chases like you know um, whatever yeah. the, the fad is um, it's actually you doing the practice according to a age-old ancient timeless practice of breathing in a certain way being in a certain way holding your body in a certain way so that all the other aspects of being actually just falls away and that's the way um, yeah yeah yeah, and that's uh, that does seem quite a long way away from the from the surgery. Yeah, and I, and I'm I, I, to be honest, I'm I'm very uh, while I, while it was very much part of who I was and and uh, gave me a lot of opportunity to challenge myself in many ways. I I have to say that on the soul level, I'm still you know excited about the prospect of examining myself every day in terms of. The spirituality of yoga and what yeah. you and and it brings to me so i'm, yeah. I'm very grateful I, i've turned the corner now and i i know that there, there isn't really a way back and this you know yeah. yeah something something profoundly changes but i i don't yeah. think that will for me personally yeah, yeah. thank you Jan. thank you so much for the conversation i really appreciate that and um and yeah, thank we'll you for some... in, We'll have some more of these, and um, I'm, I'm also um, uh, drawn to these conversations because it's not just information, and it's also not just uh, sharing, and sharing is caring. It, it, there's actually a real um, exchange of not so much ideas or biographies, but um, w when I said earlier, energy... Uh, vibrational changes and shifts it's um, I, I have a real um, appreciation for for things coming out you know when people are speaking up and people are saying things and and we're not talking about we haven't had many opinions in this conversation um, there, there were more observational uh, observational personal um, comments but at the same time I'd say on the earth level um, universal for, for many people and uh, specifically this idea of looking for a way that how, wherever we come from whether it's you and your from your background or another person from another background but there's a similarity in in wanting to rather opt at a later stage in life for that matter when you realize I've been there, done that, now what? Um, and and that's, that's a really important aspect as well. I've turned a corner, what, now what? You know, I'm around the corner, that's fine. Now I'm, I'm here now. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I really um, I would wish for, for uh, more and more people to be able to share and um, be drawn to this as a, as a way of being. So thank you for sharing your uh, story. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you for, inv for inviting me. And uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a great blessing. Thank you, my friend. Thanks. And, chat again. Yeah.